Today, I'm gonna show you guys three methods that's gonna make starting your melodies much easier. For me at least, I find it to be the most time consuming and also most difficult part of making a melody. So I thought I'll give you guys some sauce on how we can make it much easier. So let's get right into the video. So method number one is to start off with some chords. This is probably the most common way of starting off your melody. So first, you're gonna wanna find a sound that you feel inspired by that you like want to make a beat with but you also don't want to spend too much time on looking for this sound if you're uh, spending too long on finding a sound then just pick like a piano or something that you know will sound good okay but before we put any notes in i want to show you a little thing you can do that's just going to make the whole process of making your melody much easier and there's two ways of doing this so the first way is you go into the piano roll and you click on this little arrow right up here then you go in on view and then all the way down here and scale highlighting then for most beats you want to press on minor natural and then afterwards go back in on view and scale highlighting and select your root note. You can always like change this later and pitch up your melody or pitch it down. But I'm just going to start off with G for now. So now all the white notes are going to be in the same key. But there's also another way you can do this, which is just going to make it more visual. Here you just have to open another instrument, doesn't matter what instrument it is. Then you turn it off and then again go up in this little arrow right here and then go in on stamp and then again choose the minor natural scale right down here and then press it where you want your scale to be. So it's gonna be G. So now we got the whole G minor scale in here. Now you can drag it out like this and then you can just copy it over like a couple of times and then you can go back into the other instrument. Now you can just follow these notes right here, these ghost notes. This just makes sure that you're gonna always gonna be in the right key. For the actual melody now, I'm just gonna start off placing in some bass notes. So that's gonna be the bottom note of the chord. You could also go one chord at a time, but I just find it a bit easier to start off with the bass notes. So let me make a little bass note thing right here. Okay, so now we got the bass notes in. So now I'm just gonna turn these into chords instead of them just being bass notes. Six hours later. So now we got your chords in, now we can just mess around maybe with some rhythm. You can do like something like this, for example. And you can do like a ton of different stuff. You can move the individual notes a bit around. but getting some chords down can really be a good way to just get a foundation for the rest of your melody. Okay, there's another variation of starting off with chords that I want to show you guys, and that is what I call the internet money method, because I've seen a lot of the guys from internet money use this, especially Nick Mirror, for example. Of course, other people also use this, but especially those guys have used it a lot. So you can again start off with bass notes, or you can not start off with bass notes. This one might actually be easier without, but I've just made a little bass line right here. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add the other notes that would normally be in the chord, but just make him into almost like a melody. Okay, I think I went a bit too overboard with this, but I think you get the idea. This technique is a bit more advanced and it is a bit harder to do, but it's a really good way to like find out what notes sound good with each other and how to make a good melody. And this is the perfect way to make a melodic beat. Also sometimes when I'm not really feeling inspired with what I've just made and I feel like, mm, I don't really know what to use this for, then I sometimes export it into a MIDI file or just export it as a loop. Then you can either send it to somebody else that may be able to make a banger out of it or you can use it yourself later. Okay, so the next thing on the list is using arpeggiators and sequences. If I'm really uninspired and I really just want to make like a hard, dark beat, then an arpeggiator or a sequencer is what I go for. It's such an easy way to just get a foundation down really quickly and it usually sounds pretty good. First, you're gonna want to find a plugin that has a lot of good arpeggiators. If you have some money to spend, then a plugin like Spire would be really good. And also I have a plugin called Hybrid, which is pretty decent. But if you don't have a lot of money to spend, then the stock plugin in FL Studio called Citrus is really good. So how you do this is you literally just load up one of these presets right here, and then I'm just gonna place a note in here. And you could just use this actually, but you could also just add like some extra notes on top.
And there we go, already got a crazy melody right there. The only downside to using this method is that it's very hard to make new melodies and, and come up with something new. So I think you should just make this as your foundation and then just add on top of this with other melodies. Or I can even export this as an audio clip and then flip it around, reverse it and do a ton of weird stuff. Okay, but with these arpeggiators, you could also go a step further and make them yourself. So I'm just gonna open up a serum with like a lead and then you can go into your piano roll and then you can just make your own arpeggios. And you can make them shorter and make them longer, whatever. This way it's much harder to make them, but it is much more customizable and you could just like literally make anything that you want because you got full control over the notes. I'm just giving you as many ways to start your melodies as possible because having a ton of options always just makes it a lot easier. So you don't always make the same stuff all the time. See now I already got like a different type of melody by just adding some shaper box. So I think that was about it for the arpeggios. So now moving on to the last thing. So now moving on to the third method and that is starting off with a sample or a MIDI. So this method is especially great if you have a little bit of a, like a beat block or something where you like can't get yourself to make anything and it's really hard to just like start off a beat. Some good places to find these melodies is either you have maybe have some friends that are sending you loops or you know when I told you before that you could like export your melodies if you're not too happy with them like before you're completely done and then you can use that MIDI or that loop as like a starter for the rest of your melody. Another great way to get these starters is from a website called Looperman. Uh, Looperman is pretty great. It's like a website just filled with a ton of royalty free free loops that you can just go and download if you just sign up. Of course, not all of them are super high quality and sound too good, but they're usually pretty simple. So they're a really good way to start off your beats. For example, I've downloaded one from Looperman right here. It's like a little ambient vibe. You could also just turn this into a beat and just put drums on. But that's not what this video is about. This video is about adding your own sauce and making your own melodies. And it's also pretty boring if you just take a loop and just put drums on it. So for example, I added my own sauce to this loop right here and now it sounds like this. You can still hear the sample in there, but it sounds a lot different and there's a ton of different instruments in there. I added a couple serums. And on the sample itself, I just put some RC20 and some kickstart on there. And then I also took and pitched it down seven semitones for this other part right here. So now this melody is ready for some drums or to, ready to be sent out to somebody else. Also another good place to find these samples is Cymatics. On Cymatics there's always a bunch of different sample packs that you can just download on their website for free. And uh, it's pretty high quality most of it. And sometimes if there are too many sounds going on at once, then you can maybe take like one of the sounds out. Maybe there's like a little flute or maybe there's a little guitar. And then you can take that guitar out or that flute out and just flip that sound into your own thing and add your own melodies. You know what, I'm just giving you all these ideas so, so you have all the options to choose from because I don't want you to make the same thing over and over again. But I hope you found this video useful. If you did, then please leave a like and also subscribe. That would be much appreciated. And also check out this video where I tell you how you can make your mixes sound industry ready. Peace out.